Hey, it's Dr. Jen. I want to talk to you about Bulgarian split squats and making sure that you're not just putting too much pressure into the knee, making sure those glutes are activating. But if you do want to work the quad, how you can change up the position and make sure you do that as well. Now, I want to say if you are ready to switch up your game in home and not just do body weight squats, but actually get some weights, our whole system that we set up in home, which I don't know if you've seen on Instagram at DocGenFit, but I showed a whole reel of our home gym, which is really incredible because PRX, which is where these weights are from, but PRX has a whole like foldable system. So especially if you only have like one stall in your garage that you really want to make into a gym, but still be able to park, they have a foldable system into the wall and it's really incredible. All of it looks so clean. Our weights are flush against the wall. Our All the equipment, all the attachments that would go onto the rack, it's all into the wall. So it cleans up your space completely, which is really incredible. So I'm going to drop the link for PRX below so you could check that out if you're in the market or have been wanting to add some home pieces from to your gym. Um, now let's get into the Bulgarian split squat. So first of all, I like to go over the setup first. So when we come into a Bulgarian split squat, the one thing is like how far away or how close am I, right? Now, I like to say an easy way to kind of measure it is to go into a quad stretch because from this quad stretch, you kind of see, okay, this is where my setup should be because ideally we want our back knee kind of dropping below our hip and we want to make sure that if we lean forward, we're not going too far where my heel is lifting up and I can get my hip back into a comfortable place. So if you have trouble getting into a quad stretch, um, just move that foot out just a little bit more. The thing that I wanna make sure you're not doing is you're so far out in that front leg that you kind of are making this big stretch in the back leg, okay? We don't want to be pressing the hips forward in a Bulgarian split squat and having that knee just come forward. That is just asking for a lot of tension in this back leg. It's asking for a lot of tension in the front knee, and it's really not effective to what we want to create in a Bulgarian split squat. So again, kind of setting it up, coming down, finding your position, and then I can say, okay, this is where I am. Now, I also don't like the toe up. When we put the toe up, it pushes a lot of force into this back quad. So now I'm not just working in my front leg, which is really what a Bulgarian split squat should kind of be about, is the focus is on this leg that's on the floor. But if I flip my toe under, now I'm putting pressure down into that back foot. So you're gonna feel a lot of quad in that back leg just flip that toe under, okay? Now that we have the setup, we wanna go over the body mechanics as we're going into that Bulgarian split squat. Now, what you wanna create here, I'll do it without weights, so I'm not just huffing puffing the whole time. <laughs> so what we wanna create here is the hip to come back, okay? Now, when I draw my hip back, I help to align my knee and my big toe. So let me show you from the front here. If I draw my hip back, and this is the same for lunges, if I draw my hip back, I automatically start to align what's happening and my knee doesn't fall on the inside and I get more space in my hip to actually be able to bend so I'm not bending from the back, okay? So again, my knee doesn't fall in, I'm not bending from the back. Instead, I draw my hip back toward the back here so that it aligns and I can bend solely from that hip so I actually get that glute activation that I wanna get. So let me show you again. I'm just gonna move the weights out of the way. Not ready to bump up my Bulgarian split squat just yet as I'm talking it through. So finding my position, flipping my toe and bring that hip back. And you can even do running arms. You can reach that opposite arm. And what you'll notice is that it automatically kind of stacks my position here as well. So as my hip goes back, I don't need to lean forward. I don't need to fall. I can keep a good stable spine here with just a bit of a twist into my upper back, which helps to again, set the pressure into this glute. Okay. Because that's what I want to feel. I want to feel this glute primarily doing the work and lifting me back up. So again, here, reaching forward and making sure that I don't just lean back, okay? I don't want my rib cage to flare here. So I want to keep my rib cage 
over my pelvis here. So as I reach back, I can reach forward, hit back and reach forward. And if you do just five of those without even using any weight, you're going to feel your glutes start to fire up because you're getting into a deeper range of motion and you're only using the glute rather than the low back. Okay. Now, if you are looking to build more quads and you don't just want to stay into your glute, that is where you could put a little bit more pressure forward. Okay. So rather than just pulling this hip back, now I'm going to let my knee go forward. Now this is also dictated on how much ankle range of motion because we don't want to be lifting onto the toe. Okay. So now as my knee comes back, I'm going to keep my chest up a little bit more and let my knee come forward. And what I feel here, even though my hip comes back, I still get a little bit of twist. I'm keeping my pressure forward. So my knee comes forward and I feel a lot more quad. So positioning, toe under, reach, hip back, chest forward for hip or hip back and knee forward for a little bit more quad. You can always do things a little bit different depending on your intention in the exercise, but making sure that we have good alignment from the knee, the toe and the hip is crucial no matter what. Making sure that you're keeping a pretty straight spine and you're not just rounding is crucial no matter what. And making sure we're not putting too much pressure on that back foot is also crucial. So hopefully this really helped you. Comment below, let me know, are you using some of these tools? Did some of them surprise you? Are you interested in learning more on different exercises? If you're stuck on like, my knee hurts during so-and-so, or I can't do this exercise because of whatever is happening, please comment below. I need to hear from you so I know what videos I can make for you. If you love what you're learning, don't forget there's so much more that I have in store. So hit that subscribe button, check out the other videos so that you don't miss anything and you continue to learn and feel amazing within your body.